You know, a few years ago, I was privileged to help uh, edit and contribute to a devotional book. And one of the stories I included in there I'd like to share with you today, it came from the peak of the Canadian art world, a little less than 100 years ago. I have a lifelong fascination with art, especially Canadian art. And I really enjoyed reading excerpts from the journals of Emily Carr. They're filled with insights and uh, questions and spiritual hunger. If we go back to 1927, where this part of the story begins, she was traveling from Victoria to Ontario to meet the group of seven for the very first time. November 10, she stopped at the Vancouver Art School and met Fred Varley. The next day, she mentions the train stopped in Edmonton. Um, 8 a.m., we've stopped at Edmonton. We're on our way again. Uh, we know what it looks like today, but this is what she encountered when she stopped in uh, 1927, November 11th. Edmonton was awake, tram cars running, lights everywhere at 6.30. Well, a few days later, she arrived in Toronto. On the Monday, she met A.Y. Jackson. Tuesday, it was Arthur Lismer. Wednesday, it was Lauren Harris. And these were life-changing encounters, but her whole world really changed when she met Lauren Harris. That Thursday, November 17th, this is what she wrote in her journal. Oh God, what have I seen? Where have I been? Something has spoken to the very soul of me. Wonderful, mighty, not of this world. Chords way down in my being have been touched. Dumb notes have struck chords of wonderful tone. Something is called out of somewhere. Something in me trying to answer. It is surging through my whole being. Carr had been raised in a Presbyterian home, but faith was not a part of her adult life. So her response to this encounter was unexpected and deeply personal. I think perhaps I shall find God here, the God I've longed and hunted for and failed to find. And the next day she added, if I could pray, if I knew where to find a God to pray to, I would pray, God bless the group of seven. Lauren Harris was the founder and sort of unofficial leader of the group of seven. And his friendship and mentorship and encouragement were professionally very significant in Emily Carr's career. Over the next few years, they spent a lot of time in person and by mail discussing not just art, but the big questions of life, metaphysical questions and philosophical questions. And over this time, she went from wondering about not knowing a God to pray to, to these journals filled with spiritual insights on almost every page. Harris was a devotee of something called Theosophy it was sort of a New Age style uh, philosophy, and Carr was intrigued but also deeply conflicted. She admired sort of the bigness, what she called the bigness of her mentor's ideas, but on the other hand, she was repulsed that theosophy was so cold and mechanical, these ascending planes of consciousness. One meeting late into the night, they stayed up late and talked, and she was unable to sleep. She wrote, It seemed as if they had torn at the roots of my being, as if they were trying to rob me of everything. No God, no Christ, no prayer. How can I ever bear it? I ached with the awfulness of everything and cried out bitterly. I was stiff with horror. Well, they talked again later, and she was somewhat reassured and wrote that the black passed over me. But that didn't really last, and her interest in theosophy really was permanently dimmed after that trip. She was back in Victoria a few weeks later, and she met a visitor from India, a man named Raja Singh. He had a mission to rescue the children of prostitutes, and Carr was utterly captivated by his faith. I heard two more lectures by Raja Singh, and today, this is January 25th, he's been in my studio from 10.30 to 1.45. He is fearless, earnest, and grand. We talked of many things. Everything in him centers on Christ being consecrated to Christ, opening oneself to become a channel to be used by Christ. And then 88 years ago this week, this is a journal entry that she wrote January 29th. I have said goodbye to the Raja. He's splendid. I heard him eight times and I'm so glad he came here. I can't tell how glad. My whole outlook has changed. Things seem silly that used to seem smart. I've decided to take my stand on Christ's side to let go of philosophers and substitute Christ. She said, I've written to Lauren and told him about things. I think he'll be very disappointed in me. Now I turn my back on it all and go back 60 years to where I started. But it's good to feel a real God, not the distant, mechanical, theosophical one. I'm wonderfully happy and peaceful. 
Well, I've looked, and I haven't been able to find out anything more about Raja Singh or about the mission that he l led in India. But what I do know is that these uh, lectures that he gave in Victoria 88 years ago were pivotal in Carr's life. After spending about six years exploring theosophy with the most important professional figure in her life, she stepped away and went back to the beliefs of her childhood. Emily Carr would go on to live for another decade or so, and the paintings she did during this period of her life in the 30s are stunning, nationally, I would say internationally important works of art. And when they come up for auction, they sell for hundreds of thousands or, you know, into the million plus dollars. There were lots of questions, more doubts over the years, but Emily's journals also show that God was revealing himself to her and she was exalting in his goodness, especially as she sensed it in creation. And she talked about wanting to imbue her paintings with praise, singing while she worked. Lots of us wrestle with questions of faith. In Emily Carr's life, these questions and doubt took years to be explored and resolved. If they ever actually are resolved, I'm not sure that's a good word for these questions of faith, but certainly we journey through them and we grow. So thank God that he's patient with our questions and promises that those who seek him earnestly will find him. And then, of course, as we center our lives on Christ, we help others find him too. So let's pray. Gracious and patient God, in my questions, give me wisdom. In my doubts, give me faith. And like Raj is saying, help me to be centered on Christ, to be consecrated to Christ, to become a channel to be used by Christ. And like Emily Carr, may I bring praise into every part of my work today. Amen. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day.